Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. It is Local Chat, episode 138. Joining me this week, as always, the one and only Ian Gibson. Hello, I'm here with my will. Wow. Uh, and just one more thing, officer, Jason Derulo is here. Can you believe it? I signed in my will that I would have to wear the exact same shirt Will wore, uh, unfortunately. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh my goodness, we aren't oh. we? We might be. Uh, no, mine has a. <laughs> Could be. No. God damn it. Oh. Well, here, mine. If I go lower. No. Yeah. Wait, there. take your shirt off and then. No, I'm good. Uh, <laughs> there's nothing to show there. <laughs> it's got to be better than I, me. Two questions. One. First question. Answer. Who, Daily Double. Who, who is. Who is Jason Derulo? I know the name. I have no <laughs> idea who that person actually is, though. I got called that in high school a lot. Uh, I think, um, uh, I think he's a singer. Yes. He, wait, do you guys, I, I, are you memeing or do you actually not know? I actually don't I, know. I don't know. I, I don't know. He I sings, don't know. Mm, what you say. Oh, the oh, SNL skit. I know that song. <laughs> yeah, I know the song. That's Jason. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, it second question. It was like a meme in, like, on YouTube for like 2011. Yeah. Yeah. From, wasn't it from the OC and then the SNL yeah. blew it out? I remember yeah, seeing an IRL Smash Brothers com like thing. Orange like, County? Shot, yeah. yeah, the OC. The OC. Um, second question. Jason, uh, yes. Chucky Milk King. Genuine sure. question here. Yeah. Have you, in all your drinking travels... Ever discovered a do-it-yourself chocolate milk syrup or powder or whatever that meets your standards? I don't. I I do. I really do not like syrup or powder. I think once you start mixing with that, instead of it's not, it's not the same. It, yeah, it's just yeah. not as good. I think I, agree. I haven't come across yeah. one. Oh, I'm not gonna rule it out entirely, but like they're just you can tell immediately if it's yeah. actual chocolate milk or made with syrup afterwards yeah i i totally agree i was just hoping there was a I, I haven't come across helping me i had yeah i, had I, was, chocolate milk I in, was hoping you had i had chocolate milk in south korea it was not great unfortunately yeah because i feel like if syrup or powder was as good i would prefer that to buying chocolate milk from the bottle because then i have milk and i can use it as normal milk or have chocolate milk yep. but it's just not the same you know, plus it's, people's it's levels are consistent, uh, like d inconsistent. So you're like, okay, I'll use this yeah. much powder versus that person's Nest Quick or whatever, and then it doesn't work. Yeah, doesn't yeah. Work. Bad news. I, just, I just prefer and straight from note. the chocolate cow. Um, cool. yeah, straight from the teat. Uh, you'll see me straight from the udder. Yeah, straight from the ud. That's what we call it. They say, "Where's Will?" Under the ud. Uh, Man, I should get on. There's got to be a chocolate milk talk, right? There's got to be that community. Like a TED talk? It probably is, yeah. No, like, you know, you know what they call like TikTok? Oh, oh Will doesn't use TikTok. He, he doesn't understand that. Genuinely, one of the best things about TikTok is that the algorithm is actually very good at identifying what you like, and it'll start serving you that shit like crazy. So it serves me like like very specific model making content and Lego content. Too many and jokes. I, I recently got <laughs> I recently got into Japanese stationary talk, which is oh. just uh, uh, Westerners being like, we just got in the list of award recipients for the 2023 Japanese stationary awards. And then they like go through the pens and I'm like, fuck, yeah, show me these pens. Oh. That's see, I the best thing about TikTok. Anytime I see a human being or someone talking in a video, I hate it immediately, and I have to not watch it. Uh, it's it's we're on we're on Twitch and yeah. YouTube. You know I that, don't, right? I don't I don't watch our content. I hate social. Media. I was I, I was just telling my coworker because I asked her how Instagram works um, because I what? on Instagram I I don't browse my feed because I hate everyone I follow. Um, so I just go to the discovery tab and I scroll that oh, and then God. every couple months, I, I just hate Instagram every, every couple months. I just reset my data in Instagram and it refreshes the entire thing. Um, I just so like, I like if, Inst if Instagram was really just pictures, I think it could work 
because it could be like a better version of Pinterest where like we know what you're interested in. So we're just going to show you these pictures. The problem I have with Instagram is that it turned into like this uh, this marketing slash influencer yeah. haven and the fact that people actually use comments and discussions. And as far as I can tell, there's no character limit. So every time I see a screenshot of a comment from Instagram, it's like four fucking paragraphs. Yeah. And I'm just like, I don't fucking want that at all. Yeah. I don't get Instagram. I don't get it. I, I mean, I, I, I don't know. I, I don't get the di What's the difference between Instagram and TikTok then? Uh, TikTok is videos. Like, yeah, Instagram is like you can put ten photos on, have people well, comment. Yeah, on like but the Instagram has the reels, which is similar to TikTok. It does, but TikTok but is it's not. Yeah, yeah, TikTok I, is like you load TikTok and it's like boom, here's a video. You scroll, here's another video. Here's I another say, video. TikTok's more meme worthy too, I think. If yeah, trying to get specific, yeah. like it, yeah, gotcha. yeah. But also, it's it's just that it's new content new content constantly in your face instead of having to go to a hub and then start browsing from there it's always in your face and the like for example one of the things they do is if you hit the back button or trying to exit the app they will show you a new video <laughs> so you have to like exit twice real quick at least on android <laughs> because if you just do the exit oh, once it's just like okay new I video see. and the other thing is genuinely the tiktok algorithm is fucking incredible. It's the best on any social media because it will figure out what you like and then it'll just start serving you that shit and high quality of that shit. And it's amazing because and not just that, but also identifying the content that people are adding. It's not necessarily looking just at the hashtags. It's doing something in the background where like like one of the TikTok communities that the algorithm serves me, not because I follow anybody, but because it knows that I like it is drywall TikTok is just people putting up fucking drywall and 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 putting up the plaster and doing that shit and I'm just like feed that shit to me so now it feeds it to me along with all my other interests and I never followed anybody it just knows these are drywall videos it knows that I like them and it's constantly feeding them to me yeah, it's amazing he's in chose his words very carefully he says interest which is perfectly true but you could also have said <laughs> fetish and not have been wrong <laughs> so white what can I say it's white and sticky <laughs> <laughs> There's lots of it. Gotta love that drywall plaster. A lot of schools from a distant video. Uh, it's really weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the live ones. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. I I just I don't use my phone that much, and I don't feel like using it more. So I guess I that's fair. Won't download TikTok. Um, I spend my hours looking through cards. Uh, that's what I do. Uh, and crying and blocking ads on Twitter. That's what I do. Um, folks, we're here to talk about video games. Um, we have a little section up front here that called the chit chat section, but I'm moving the chit chat section because I was going to talk about Starfield, but I think we're going to talk about our big Starfield stuff next week. Um, my well, only. We can, we, can, we can hit on it very briefly. Well, and do the I was deep just going to say. I just didn't want to forget this. I had a, I've been okay. I started a new anime. It's called Star Trek: The Next Generation. It's great. Um, I'm about ten episodes into the first season, um, and I was just thinking, I was just thinking how great Starfield modded into a Star Trek game, Starfield would be, because it is literally. There's like a little bit of space combat in Star Trek. No. But I think no, like going no, to random planets and beaming down, uh, and like no, will, no, no, no. Starfield's a bad game. You just want a Star Trek game. No, I don't want Star I know. Trek anywhere associated with Starfield. No, I just mean, I mean they're never gonna make a good Star Trek game. So I think you no, can mod have... Starfield into a good Star Trek game. Wasn't there that really good first person shooter Star Trek game in the early two thousands? Maybe, I but like, like I feel like Star Trek's a hard game to make into a game or a hard prompt to make it no game, though. yeah and i feel like starfield's halfway there where you're like going to planets and surveying and stuff yeah so i'd be totally I into like that. every planet's a different race and you're like going down on the planet doing your little b movie thing talking to the people and yeah. figuring it out and then you go back up to your ship you, you get some like it's not Mass a direct two, one to man. one come on but it just made me think like yeah. they're like 25 percent of the way to a really great star trek game and, you know, honestly, this is the perfect time for a Star Trek game because video game companies, they're all about IPs right now, pre-existing IPs. 
and Paramount is making a huge Star Trek push. So you just got to get those two people together and boom, you're going to have a giant Star Trek deal out there. And Star Trek Online apparently is is pretty good. Never tried it. So there are good Star Trek games out there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and I think uh, I was a little harsh saying there are no good Star Trek games. It's just like I, I just think that lines up really well yeah. where I could see someone being like, we're making a big Star Trek Starfield mod. And like the logo is Starfield crossed out field okay. and it wrote Trek. Hear underneath. me out. They put Spock in Fortnite. That's close enough, right? Oh, fuck. Oh. Did they really? <laughs> Which Spock no. is it? You believe. So I could say I could put anybody in fucking Fortnite. You'd believe me, though. Yeah, it could be it's anybody. Like, <laughs> I feel like right now you could say 10 anybody's yeah. and at least three or four of them Indiana actually Jones is would in the be fucking in. game. Like Indiana yeah. Jones, I'm pretty sure, yeah. is in the game. Can you believe yeah. they put Zack from Save Data in Fortnite? Oh, God. The dude wearing a banana shirt. Yeah, and he does the... the I, I, haven't, I can't make fun of him. I, I haven't talked to him in a while. <laughs> I don't know what stupid shit he's into. Um, they got that Ace, Ace Attorney. Attorney. <laughs> oh, <there we> <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, no, that's, a, that's a good point. And I, and I think... I, I think that's actually a really good idea is it's a single player Star Trek game, but it's focused more. It's it's a bit of an RPG, but it's focused less on like combat and more on you're going to encounter these planets in any order and how you deal with them. Baldur's Gate style is going to have drastic impacts on you, the world and the story, etc. And I feel like Bethesda's bad writing is good enough to match most middle of the road Star Trek episodes where they're like yeah. their high good quests will be like the highlights. Whereas if you had Baldur's Gate people write a Star Trek game, you'd just be like, this is way too fucking good. Like you can't do this. Yeah. Um, you can't do that. That's not enough sex. Uh, random. Yeah, You got all those happening. developers complaining on Twitter who are like, stop comparing us to Baldur's Gate. They're yeah. too good at making games. Yeah. Yeah. I'm forget it was in three years of early access. That was, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. We should do that. Uh, good. That was my Star Trek Starfield oh. idea. I thought it was pretty good. Oh um, God, that's why I come to this podcast. Sorry. I just can we just can we can we just jump to the Starfield bit because I just realized the games industry and games media is so fucked right now <laughs> because the two conversations back to back were Baldur's Gate is incredible and kind of the games industry games Twitter reaction was like don't hold us to that standard we can't make that yeah I've heard about we're, we're not capable of making good games like that because of XYZ excuses and yeah that's a bit reductionist but I'm gonna say that and then Starfield comes out and Starfield is a solid fucking six out of ten and you got all these fucking game devs fucking drooling okay. over it and being like this is the best single player game I've ever played you fucking idiots can, can like, I ask you real standards. quick real quick yeah, though, go ahead just off of something you i don't want to derail anything six out of ten which yeah. is if is that a success i know not for probably for starfield they probably if you're aim they're probably aiming higher obviously is six out of ten good enough like a realistic six out of ten is that fine enough to set if it sells you know it you know like it, it doesn't have like a bad impact comparison to like uh, fallout 76 which had a bad impact obviously initially at least is that a, is that so a win for bethesda enough would you say if it makes I, any sense, I, I think I do, but I'm going to I'm going to disregard the six okay. out of ten. And I'm going to say, is is Starfield a big enough win for Bethesda? And yes. it absolutely is. OK, yeah, that's all I wanted to know. Sorry, unfortunately. But okay. yeah, sorry, I, I just went on a tangent there, but it it, it just kind of put the stark co contrast where we had an incredible like once every 20 years game come out and the games industry like almost I don't want to say poo pooed it, but the games industry reaction was like, we're not capable of making games like that. This is a once in a lifetime. Nobody's ever going to do this again. When in reality, they weren't doing anything that crazy. They just did existing things very well. Whereas Starfield comes out and it's not doing anything very well. And the games industry, you know, I'm seeing these tweets from all these game developers like David Jaffe saying it's the greatest single player game he's ever played. And it's like, what the fuck oh, are you talking oh, about? It, it looked like yeah. just a normal Fallout game, which is in space, which is fine. Like, if that's what you want to do, it, just, it didn't look bad. It just looked, yeah. you know, like your fall, standard Fallout Bethesda fanware, which is fine. Like, if that's your thing, and it's probably solid. Yeah, it, and so I think, just to kind of touch on it, the problem I'm having with Starfield is that it's the same fucking game they've been putting out for 20 years. Yeah. 
That's what I thought um, too. And in my head, you know, people keep saying Bethesda game, and and I and the problem I'm having with that is they're saying Bethesda game, and they're not saying that to say a particular type of game. You know, they're they're trying to say it's a Bethesda game, like you would say it's a Metroidvania, it's a battle royale, as a way of explaining its mechanics or how it works. But that's not what they're really saying, whether they realize it or not. When they say it's a Bethesda game, they are saying it has a particular brand of jank, lack of polish and bugs to it and lack of proper implementation. But they're using that as an excuse. And they're basically saying they're putting out the same half ass game as they always have. What did you expect? That's what I buy it for. I buy it for the half assed game. And it's like, hey, that's fine. But that doesn't make it a good game. And it's it's just very frustrating because in my head, there's almost I always thought of it as like any other series or any other game. Right. They put out the first game. They put out the second game. It's a little bit better. They put out the third game. It's better than that. They put out the fourth game. It's better than that. Right. They're improving on it. Mm -hmm. But I had this revelation. I can't remember if I said this on local chat last week. I had this revelation in the past week where I was like, they're not doing that. The games they have put out since, you know, let's let's call it since Morrowind have been the exact same fucking game with the exact same fucking problems. And it's not the game that's changing. It's the games industry and it's how gamers play games and what gamers expect from games that has changed. So when Morrowind came out, right? Game of the fucking future, right? We're like, holy shit, how do you have a world like this? How do you have so many people in it? Like, people are doing these different things. These are pe real people, right? Oblivion comes out. It's the same fucking game. And we're like, whoa, this game still feels like it's from the future. Skyrim comes out. Fallout 3 comes out. And it's like, this game feels like the game of now. This is what video games can do right now, right? Fallout 4 comes out. Scar Starfield comes out. It's the exact same fucking game. It doesn't feel like the game of the present anymore. It's a game from fucking wow. seven years ago but I want, they haven't I, improved their games not, not if will wants to jump in let me know but i i do want to <laughs> like it's not again even challenger it's more of a, just like an inquisitive thing i was about to write a video topic on something about if you change your game too much it's bad but if you don't if you stay the same it's also bad like not to use it every time yeah. i don't want to be that guy but fe fire emblem changes its game every title they have the same format but for the most part from game to game they're pretty different uh <laughs> and it's the same but like zelda does something almost unique. There's like a wolf form. There's a water form, and or you're swimming in one, yeah. or you're boat riding in one. And versus and Skyward Sword, you're flying around in the thing, and they have different mechanics. Breath of the Wild is completely different, obviously. Do you want them to? You're you're more saying Bethesda game in a negative light, but even as a grand scheme of things, do you want them to change from game to game, kind of like Bioshock, and then eventually die off, like because people are like, I didn't like the direction you took, you know, like. Is it better for them to stay in their, their realm where they're comfortable, they know they can succeed, they get a 6 out of 10, like you said, or not, not that mm -hmm. you already redacted that, but they sell their game. That's good enough for them. They can keep making games. As long as they're still in the industry, they're fine. Would you rather them do that than burn out trying to do something and failing? So what if they had Starfield and they kind of pulled like a No Man's Sky and didn't achieve what they wanted to do with like planet wise you couldn't go everywhere or something like that when it first came out like, yeah so so, so uh, it's a long-winded question i know but do you want them to adapt or do you want them to stay comfortable i guess maybe somewhere in between is probably your sweet spot but yeah yeah so i i would say it's a little bit in between but the in between is even simpler than that yeah. it's not even that i'm upset that they're not doing new shit with their games it's that the, sh the basic fucking shit they have in their games, they're not even doing well enough. Okay. They still have fucking problems with companions getting stuck in doors, getting stuck in different places, disappearing. It's happened to me. They still have problems with uh, facial animation and faces looking fucking weird. They still have problems with dialogue and storylines just not being interesting at all. It's not the new stuff that they're failing at or the lack of new stuff. It's the same stuff that they've been doing for several games now. The same exact mechanics and gameplay basics, etc., that they're not improving proving on those basics themselves it's 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 like they're carrying the same fucking bugs forward and and it, they're making the same exact like creative it, it, writing mistakes it looks like they're using it's, the same engine almost every time which I, is funny I believe it is yeah but so. they they like they iterate it each time yeah. but it's 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 just fucking wild because like there was this moment where i'm talking to this guy right talking to this guy and i'm looking at 
he's wearing like a like a future business suit. Right. And I'm like, fuck, that looks really good. Like the texture had like a thread weave on it and you could see like three dimensionality in in the texture weave. And I'm like, fuck, that looks so good. And then I look like six inches up and I see his face and it's literally just like like a uniform, blurry, single flesh colored like circle with just like a moving mouth and dead eyes. And I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with you that you could like the engine is capable of incredible things and you are making beautiful things in this, but you can't get basic fucking like facial animation and facial look right. And it looks the same way it has for all these games. Will, I know you play a bunch more Bethesda games. Am well, I, I just, face here. No, no. I, I think. Listen, for me, I, I, I Starfield's a solid. I, at this point, it's a six out of ten for me. Um, I, I mm-hmm. haven't played it in a week or two. Um, so it, it, forgive me. Um, but I, as far as the character animation stuff, um, or facial animation, I will say, I like that they still. And I don't think it looks good. Like I agree with you on everything. I like that they still manually sort of do it when a lot of games nowadays just do like the sort of motion capture. Um, wait, wait, sorry. I don't mean to cut in. Are we sure they're doing it manually? Because I think it's the opposite where it looks like they just have a system. No, sorry. Their mouth. I, I, I more have meant there's not an actor there and they're capturing them saying the lines. Oh, and then gotcha. it, it. That is, that is I not think, mocap. I think, okay. Yeah. I think mocap is, has, has hurt the industry in that sense where when you're not having someone mo-capped, you're like, ha ha ha, you're not mo-capped. So I, I, I yeah. forgive it there because like I'm personally fine with it, but I also hate voice. I hate when people move their mouths in any video game because it always annoys me when mm-hmm. stuff doesn't line up um, regardless if it's mo cap or not. I just want to say uh, as a, like I've always used Bethesda as an identifier of the like janky type of game. Like I would almost categorize uh, i forget did i say this on local chat or did i say this i might have said this somewhere else but i i learned i feel like bethesda game studios is a studio that accidentally got famous and they are on the same level as like uh thq nordic and like elix and gothic yes yes, and all of those incredible yes like i found two rpgs today from 2006 that are solid six and seven out of tens that people love because those games are great they just can't they don't they're not top tier games they're not anything they're great time you play it you're done with you have fond memories of it and i think bethesda accidentally got pushed up into this echelon of like perfect yes uh, and and i don't agree with all these developers but like they got pushed up with the bungees and the and the naughty dogs and the santa monica's where everyone expects this crazy thing from them and that's kind of not what they do they do stick to the same thing almost every time and i i feel like the recent problem that i'll agree with you ian is i think they keep finishing a game and they go shit we nailed that um let's yes. let's set yeah. everything in that game as perfect and go from there when they should say hey let's fix all the shit in our previous game and then go from there and i think the main yeah. thing is like Morrowind fantastic game i love it Oblivion probably my favorite game of all time Fallout 3 i love it's got some writing issues fantastic game Skyrim i i also love um it's lower on my list but hey, where's where's New game. Vegas baby New Vegas, New Vegas oh, is not a Bethesda game, that's my, that's so I can't, I, <laughs> I can't it's put the it on the Bethesda list. Bethesda game. It's, my, it's, it's my not a Bethesda game. game, so I can't put it on the list. Um, <laughs> it, uh, but then I'll say Fallout Four. They were like, okay, hey, we did everything great. Let's not fix anything from Fallout Three or New Vegas or Skyrim. Let's add outposts and let's add. Yeah. Uh, let's add a like a, system. a system, yeah, shitty crafting system and survival mechanics, and let's make the main character talk for some stupid reason. Which I'm so happy they walked back. Um, everyone's happy they walked that back. And then they're like, okay, Fallout Four, and then they're like, oh, Starfield. Okay, so we nailed all that well, shit. So let's 76. make. Oh, skip, oh. Well, God, that's, skip that's true. Yeah. Um. <laughs> so. And then in Starfield, they're like, oh, let's fucking crank up the cr- crafting and the outpost stuff and everything. And they keep adding these systems. And that's why I say, like, I'm confused because, Ian, you're right. But I want... They're, they are making the same game every time. But I want 
I want them to make the same game without adding the stupid shit they think people want. Like Fallout 4 yes. and Starfield. Yes. I, th I Starfield's maybe an exception, but Fallout 4 would have been better without the crafting and the outpost stuff. And yeah. them thinking it was solid in that game and then adding it to Starfield and adding a little bit more is just like the frustration. Starfield would be an excellent... I would love Starfield a whole lot more if it was just a Fallout 5, like one map walking around doing shit um but they like tried to cram so much stuff into it that even the bethesda-ness of that game that i love about the bethesda games is not yes. there and i think that is the core yes. to the reason i don't like this game is it just doesn't feel like a bethesda game it's just too they've they've left all of the <laughs> stuff that made those games behind and have gone fully into so it's funny, I while agreeing with you saying they've stayed the same for too long, they've also changed too drastically, focused too drastically uh, on things that I don't yeah. like anymore. Ah, the old uh, classic Bioshock Infinite, baby. Yeah. yeah. So I I I'm I'm well, I'm genuinely mad and flabbergasted at you because you hit the nail on the fucking head. They are they are Elix. They are a studio that makes a particular weird game. They are incapable of making anything other than that fucking game over and over again, either in direct sequels or they change the genre and setting slightly, but it's the same fucking game and it's a constant six out of 10 or seven out of 10 and it has its niche. But the problem exactly as you said, is that people treat them like a triple A studio and therefore we exp and they get the AAA marketing, they get the AAA release, they get AAA coverage. And the fact of the matter is they're not a fucking AAA studio. Well, they are they, not capable they, of delivering yeah. AAA quality. To, to add to it, though, they also get AAA cushioning, too. I think people are more yes. gentle with them. Sometimes. Oh, for sure. Or, yes. or brutal, 100%. I guess, both and, ways. But some people and like, I think oh, that, like, give them some leniency. I'm like, no, you could tear into these assholes if you want. Like, that's and fine. I think yeah. they know that, Ian, and I think they're trying to they've been trying to get out of that since Skyrim, but they're trying to get out of it in the wrong way because they took one look at Minecraft and said, we need that in our games. And yeah. they half asked it where it's not full Minecraft and it's not full Bethesda, where I think if they had, if they had fully committed or had stayed the course, I think four and 76, 76 is an outlier because of the whole push for yeah. all that multiplayer stuff. But four and I think Starfield would be better games if they had picked one or the other. I think but I think people would I... have been sad if Fallout Four wasn't a Bethesda game, but a lot of people would have been like, "Oh, this Minecraft Fallout survival game's fun." Um, sorry, mm -hmm. go ahead, do, Jason. Do you hate their crafting because it was bad, or like that it was like because around that time, obviously, like you bad. can't have an open you can't have an open world game without crafting anymore. Unfortunately, pretty much almost in some capability it's usually almost always there now pretty much almost omnipresent in some way merging items or like combining items is now almost the thing almost every time mm -hmm. with your inventory <laughs> is it even in like assassin's creed they did it with like the bombs in revelation making bombs or something like that i think crafting is just bad yeah i think but i'm saying i don't i don't like it in Baldur's gate for example but it happens like yeah i don't like it that's good but i don't think you people... need to in, you don't have to engage with it in, in Baldur's gate that's what I'm saying. I don't know how big it is. I, to be forgive me for my ignorance. I don't know how big it is in Effie or yeah. or in and uh, Fallout. I don't 4. think it was that no, big. No, like, it was you like could, you could ignore all the outpost stuff and most of the stuff you could craft. You could find elsewhere. It never like forced you into. So it. would you would you rather them swing and miss, like they have, or are you saying like you don't have all this all. time? Yeah, like you should nail but, it if you're putting yeah. it. You know, you know I will saying? say like sorry. I didn't know there was crafting in Baldur's Gate 3. And I think that's yeah. the difference. I think there's the yeah. items you pick up forage wise, you can make them. In yeah. Like potions, so, see, yeah, I didn't so. even realize that. And versus yeah. Fallout is like Fallout 4 was very big into like pick up this resource. Oh, what are these 50,000 objects in this room? All of them are junk to break down to make outpost stuff out of. And, and that problem has also accelerated into Starfield where you enter a room and there's 500 things and about three of them are useful and 497 yeah. of them are nothing and you don't need to pick them up and there's no reason to have them in the video game. Um, part of me, like... Fucking uh, Starfield. 
and, and I think it's just I think it also hurts timing wise too. I I don't like yeah. Starfield from what I've seen. It looks like the same game to me, and I never really had an interest past New Vegas. So, but I I think it also came out at a bad time for them too, which is unfortunate. Yeah, so. I, I don't know because going back to my timeline argument, the best time for Starfield was seven eight years ago. Yeah, that's fair. That's the, that's the game that's they made. Fair. They made an old game. It doesn't yeah. work anymore. It's just there's a lot of problems with it that have definitely shown their age. And and again, I think that harkens back to them them being like, oh, someone being like, oh, we should change this. And someone at Bethesda saying, no, no, we signed off of that on we signed off on that in 2008, so we don't need to change it. Like we we yeah, got exactly. that down. They, it's perfect. Yeah, they don't learn. They don't learn from their mistakes. Meanwhile, there are plenty of mistakes for them to learn from. <laughs> I will say, if they came out with a video game with all of their staples in it and nothing new added, I'd be okay with that. But what if they made again, a, the problem well, is they keep trying to add yeah, new things. Yeah. They add too many new remaster. things. Um, yeah. And, <laughs> two. And, and I think the other problem is Starfield would be a different game. Um, I don't know how to word this. The they tell it's funny in the review guide I had for the game. They like explicitly are like, okay, listen, shipbuilding, outpost building, workshops, research, all that stuff. That's a late game thing. Don't worry about it right now. Like that's a late game thing. But why doesn't the game tell me that? Why isn't there a tech tree for me to unlock those things? Like I would be more apt to involve myself in all of those systems if I didn't walk into a room and there's 50 machines for me to access and I have no idea what to do. Like, give me the Minecraft. Yeah. Give me the one workbench. Let me be like, let me get that going and stuff. And then it's like, oh, this workbench needs this other thing. Add this item. Like, none of the workbenches in Starfield, Fallout 4, whatever, cross-pollinate with each other. So you're just like, oh, I need 10 iron for this, but it's not working towards the other 10 iron I need for that. Yeah. And what do I need this for? And I, I can't I, carry I enough just, of that to go to my outpost and build it. So like, it's, it's, just, it's like you said, we've got to realize they are not that good at designing games. They hit their ceiling 15 years ago and they are making the same game over and over again. And that's okay, yeah. but we shouldn't treat it like a triple A game. We shouldn't treat it like a 10 out of 10. It's yeah. a little special treat from a weird little studio. That right. should be it. And I think, and I think I, more people are catching on though. I will say that. But I just want to say if they were making the same game for 15 years ago, I think I would be happy. My problem is they're they're yeah. they're making a worse the same worst game Version. from 15 years ago. They're taking that yeah, game that, and that's making a good it worse point. is is more because you know me I'd be perfectly happy if they released an Oblivion for 10 more years like I and, and like and that's yeah. what I'm so sad about the next Fallout and, and Elder Scrolls. It's like please don't have any of the shit in it. Like I don't I don't want I mean, it in it. Hey, hey the problem it's is gonna they, have they, 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 I was gonna say they sell man. That's the yeah, problem. That's the problem. They sell. And, yeah. And any day, like and they done it two games in a row, and yeah. both those games sold. Right. So guess it's what? Tough. There's crafting. There's and crafting. I, crafting really there. yeah. Out of everything, I take the writing the least big amount. Because again, I've always thought of these games as those mm -hmm. like Eastern European RPGs. So I don't care about the writing ever. But even yeah. I in this game, compared to Baldur's Gate three, was just like, come on, man. Like I yeah. just talked to you. You told me to kill the two guys in the room. I killed the two guys in the room. And now you're asking me why I did that. What do you mean? Like, wh <laughs> what do you, of course, what? Why would you ask yeah. me? And being confused as to why and now angry at me that I killed the two people in the room. Like, and no, it's not part of the quest. It's just a problem. So, yeah. I don't know. So anyways, Sorry, didn't didn't mean to go on a Starfield tangent. I, I think it's pretty clear our feelings on it. I'll just say I put 17 hours into this since the early access release. I'm like level 21, 22. I really wanted this game to work. But honestly, the, the number one problem I have with it is that there are a very small number of things in the game that I enjoy doing and that I find fun. And, uh, you know, like, hey, uh, and but the, everything else around it is from mediocre to terrible, and I'm constantly having to interface with that. So, for example, yeah. love the shipbuilding. The idea that you can build this ship, and then you leave the shipbuilder, and you turn around, and there's the fucking ship on the ship pad, and you get to go up and explore it, and you're like, I just painted that. I just added that part. Now I'm going to go crawl around that new hab section that I did. Holy shit, I just put this together. Fucking great, right? And then I sit there, and I go... 
Okay. What do I do with this ship? There's no there's no flying ships in this game. Forget what anybody fucking tells you. There's no flying of ships in this game. There's just a very shitty, like basically barely a minigame ship combat thing that feels fucking terrible. That's it. So that's all you can do with your ship, right? And I'm like, okay, okay, I think I can handle that because I still see my ship a lot. I want to get more parts for it. How do I get more parts for it? And it's like, well, you got to rank up some perks. You got to get some money and go, how do I do that? Well, you got to do these quests. Okay, well, the quests suck. Oh, well, you got to do more combat. Well, the combat kind of sucks and is kind of bland. And it's just like like just to enjoy the parts of the game that I want to enjoy because I do enjoy them and I think they're well implemented. I have to go through so much shit that is not well implemented. And I just hit this point where I was like, I'm done. I have no motivation to play this game anymore because because the overall balance of good, enjoyable systems to bad systems, there's way too many bad ones and they get in the way. You can't just ignore them and shove them off to the side. And I'm just done. Also. So not to completely change the subject, I did want to say one thing about your shipbuilding thing is the shipbuilding's great because they've never done it before, so the person had free reign. Versus like the outpost <laughs> stuff, they were like, No, sorry, we signed off on that. We already did this. Ten years ago. This. You don't need to change that. What are you yeah. doing? You trying to make this better? Yeah. Um so that's why I think the, the ship why are you touching so encumbrance? Good. Why are you touching encumbrance? We solved that seven games ago. We did it perfectly. We sold twenty million copies, you know? That's about, that's Anyways, funny. That's, that's, so, that's that is the truth. Yeah. And I will say the other thing. Fuck. What's I, I don't know if you'll answer this correctly, but what's the one thing people never ever do in Bethesda games ever? Read. Finish the game. I, I, people never finish the game. Like you will. Like uh, most people who play Bethesda oh. games, you don't finish the game just because you don't finish the game. So yeah. In Infinite Wisdom, Todd. Todd, I love you. Don't take this the wrong way. You said, let's introduce a wicked, awesome, cool mechanic. You know how players access it? They beat the game. They beat the main story. Yeah. That's a great idea. Let's do that. Can we... Look. When are we spoiling that? Next week? We'll spoil that next week. But it's just like, they built a mechanic into their game that people will never encounter because you just don't do that with Bethesda games. And then right before the game out, game came out, you had like Pete Hines and those articles coming out about being like, make sure you beat the main story quest. It's it's how the game's good. Meanwhile, you wrote a dog shit main story quest that sucks <laughs> yeah. ass. Yeah. It to sucks. lead me it to sucks. the part that's really interesting. But then the part that's really interesting throws out the 45 hours I just spent playing your fucking game. And now I can't. And now I got to do. So it's like. So, so just in real quick, just to get some clarity. So this is something, it, is it is it end of your main playthrough or is it start of New Game Plus that you get it's, this thing? So it's the it's the start of New Game Plus, you get cool stuff. And then from there, every New Game Plus adds more stuff. So uh, as far as I understand, I haven't God. actually done it myself. And because I don't know thing, to what the extent. Thing is the New Game Plus, <coughs> yeah, the, the New Game Plus, the way I understand it is you carry over your levels and everything, but all your ships, all your outposts, all your items you've collected are gone. And so it is it is a new game plus right. in a way, but they also have unlocked this mechanic, but they're wiping shit. So it's not like immediately go to new game plus. There's no downside. It's like, no, there is a fucking downside, which is that you are losing stuff. Yeah, like as far as I understand it, I would have rather been told that mainline the main story quest and just gone to new game plus right away. Because like the other thing I don't know is like, do all of my other like if I go join the Crimson Fleet again, do I have to do the four quests I already did once? Are they going to be different? Probably. If they're not different, then why am I do like, like, and I can see them being different because that was a big touting thing that they're now saying. So, it, it, we'll talk about it more next week. But I, I, I might dive back into the game this week to just go and try out some of that stuff to see what what it's like, or at least look it up. But um. Yeah, it's just like why, why, why are you telling us about this crazy mechanic you added to the game right before the game comes out? And in order to do it, you have to do a thing most people never do in a Bethesda game. So, ugh. yeah, nightmare. I I just keep going back to what you said, which is fucking perfect. Like, this is not a AAA studio. They just keep being treated like a AAA studio. And honestly, I think, I think if someone kicked them in the face. They would be like, oh, yeah, maybe we should make a good video game. Um, yeah, but don't have to. going they back to what to. I said originally, they don't right, have to. 
They yeah. don't have to. People don't have standards. They're eating this shit up. They're eating this shit up. It's at like 85% on Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah, don't, don't All sorts of people around the industry. Best game I've ever played. This is incredible. Oh my God, this is amazing. I can't stop playing it. It's like, where's your fucking it's, standards, it, it, well, It's the same reason at EA, like, I don't want to... BA yeah. already gets beaten. It's the same reason EA was allowed to get away with all their shit. Like they're yeah, allowed to do whatever exactly. they want. People play and buy I will this also stuff on top of that. I feel like a lot of people will say that because they don't want to catch shade, which I don't think you should say something because you don't want to catch shade. But also, fuck all the people and all the gamers who are mad at people for saying a game is okay. Like your uh, games, yeah, games are allowed to be okay. <laughs> like. Yeah. Uh, it's just the way no, it's you have to have a you, no, will to be a, in a in the online business or have an opinion you have to be one side or the other it has to be black uh, or white man come on it it w honestly we would have given it a better score if it was a sony exclusive uh it's the there xbox tax uh we got to give it a worse score because uh, the amount of people who who said that towards me uh, it just makes me want to <laughs> scream Look, as somebody who doesn't like sony games those sony games are a lot better than starfield <laughs> <laughs> i will say that yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. That's why we gave it a lower score. Um, Look, can I can I cut in here real quick? Yeah, you can. I know we weren't going to talk about Starfield. I know we've talked about Starfield a lot, but shut the fuck up, Jason. Fucking good as Baldur's Gate three. Please tell me you're loving it. It's, I love it. It just takes a long time. So I've done. Unlike normal people who probably like go to something that they're interested in, I've done probably everything in Act One. So I have to still do the Mountain Pass and Under Dark. So that's I'm at twenty five. Yeah, 30 hours right now i'll probably be 35 to 40 by the time i get to act two and that's if underdark's mm -hmm. short and it's probably not so i'm probably fucked so it's god that game's it's just it's very good it's it's so fucking already, what, what's what what's what's striking you the most about i already it? i already want to go back and play a monk and just be an evil monk and just beat the shit out of people and lead the goblins to victory <laughs> That's already just what I want to do. Just push them off the cliffs. Yeah. 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 I want to do that now. But uh, I, I don't know. It's just like any time you do an approach, you can. It seems like they've accounted for multitudes of options. You want to push yeah. this person off a building like or like when you're doing the goblins, there's so many ways to do the goblin camp. Um, different. Like yeah. you can you can get fucking beaten by a guy and get a buff. You can get stabbed in the eye and get a buff. Things you wouldn't expect to give you buffs, give you yeah. buffs. Uh, pushing somebody off a ledge versus talking them, leading them away, and then killing them away. <laughs> uh, there's so many ways. You can poison the people. You can hire ogres to help out. There's so many different ways to take the thing on. Go guns a blazing. That's my favorite thing about it is every encounter yeah. probably has at minimum three to four different ways you can handle it. And that's probably at minimum. There might be even more situations that happen. Um, it's usually just not just one or two ways. And that's probably the thing I appreciate the most. Um, I probably save scummed a lot more than I deserve to have, but I like seeing just like I, I try an option. I'm like, that's really funny. I did it just for lols, so I'm not going to actually do yeah. it the way that way. Like that's but I do that all the time. In I'm going to insult this guy. Why would I do that? Because it's funny. Like, and then <laughs> I want to see get, what happens. Yeah, yeah, I get combat started. I'm like, OK, maybe I shouldn't have done that because I don't want to fight these guys. <laughs> yeah. have the and, entire... and been... yeah, so yeah. yeah. So I was just going to say, and there's been multiple times where I save because I'm preparing to save scum because there's some option and I'm like, OK, this is going to go nowhere. It's just going to be a funny response. And I do that and I do that dialogue option. And all of a sudden there's a whole fucking side avenue of a story that opens up and I'm ending up in places that I'm like, I know I would not have seen this place and done this two hour side content if I had not picked that option. Yeah. It's just like it's just like the depth of behind the doors and, and uh, I, I'm not going back to Starfield, but every conversation in Starfield is is yes, no. And sometimes there's a yes, no, maybe. Right. And they all kind of end up at the same place. And in the best quests, there's a yes aftermath and there's a no aftermath. Baldur's Gate is completely different. Like you're going through these conversations and they start to lead to branching paths and each path is feature rich. Some of the content crosses over. Some of the content's completely fucking different and it just feels so every single conversation and dialogue really is just a whole bunch of different doors with completely different rooms behind them. And that that's that's what blows me I, away. I about really that am starting to care about the characters. The weakest part actually yeah. is probably the combat for me. It feels a little sluggish sometimes if you're in a big one or like you yeah. do something and it didn't work the way you want it to do. I'm like, fuck, like I meant to like push this guy and it like did like it's not just that it didn't work. It didn't push him off a ledge or push him in the way I thought it would because I thought yeah. it wasn't close enough or this spell didn't work the way I thought it would. Uh, so sometimes I'm like, ah, that sucks. Or like, you know, sometimes things yeah. don't work the way I think in combat. It's still me getting used to it. 
Uh, I had like some encounters just like feel really bad. This paladin in the the hotel or the the motel or whatever the fuck it's not a motel, but he's like in a in that guy who's yeah. trying to kill Carlac. That encounter sucks because usually when you go to talk to him, you're just stuck in there. And as a sorcerer at like level three, I didn't have this yes. step. I'm like I'm gonna get fucking yeah. killed. And he rolled like yeah. higher than me. He just one shots me. Like, that doesn't feel good. I wish there was, some, but like I figured a different way after to reload, separate well, but, one of their pusher off, and then. Well, the other thing is just hearing you. You hit yeah. that level three. I hit that like level five. Yeah. So it's not even it's not even a yeah. linear game where you're like stuck. It's just like no, yeah. Dan, I, do what I you want at your own <clears> pace. <throat> I couldn't figure out how to get across the bridge, and then I went past back like <laughs> ten <laughs> hours later, and I said, "Oh, I can just jump across." Yeah, it. it's jumping. Jumping is <laughs> weird in that game. Jumping is weird because they they expect you to jump places, but they don't look like sometimes you can make the jump, or like you go to the yeah. very edge of the bridge where it's like cracked, and you can jump across. I'm like, God, I, fuck. I've had characters. Yeah. I got stuck a couple times where I would jump across, and then the characters would all jump across after me, and but they couldn't jump back. Yeah. And it'd be like, yes, idiots. So I'd have to like load to a portal point to get them all back. Just... I didn't even know you could load to a portal point. <clears throat> I thought for at least 10 to 15 hours, I thought you had to be at a portal to use the portal to go. To oh, that's <laughs> so I would walk literally fucking everywhere. No. I didn't know you, had, you could use it like stuff like that. I'm like still learning a lot of nightmare. It. Uh, yeah, that was so that great. Uh, that, oh. that hurt a lot. That hurt. I, I also reload the party scene like 80 times just to fuck around at the party scene when we save the two uh, things. Oh, there's a bug nice. that you can. There's a bug that you can have your side characters interact and have the sex scenes instead of you. So I had Shadowheart <laughs> and Lazelle bang it out because they were pissing me off. Oh uh, my goodness! <laughs> my wife so Lazelle. Really, huh? Huh? My, my Baldur's Gate wife Lazelle. <laughs> yeah, sorry, but Shadowheart and her had fucking big energy that they needed to fucking pent up fuck it out like please guys yeah. stop stabbing each other so i had them just fuck and they i just, just make them all know, walk around naked so you, you know. can do that too yeah <laughs> but it's it's super good there's just so many options i'm looking forward to act two it's just taking so long which is a good problem to have and i want to play with friends too but it's also hard to do to get everybody on schedule and then jason i would yeah. play with you anytime <sighs> yeah but like again, yeah, you'd have to that, start a new like account or whatever, probably. Oh, unless you wanted me to control yeah, one of your one of your guys. Yeah, yeah. And I, I've already well, played through Act One, so yeah. if you need help, let me know. Yeah. Or if you want me to, I have tomorrow off, and honestly, at this point, I think I might just play Baldur's Gate three tomorrow. Yeah. So I, I was thinking about it because I I just started Act three, and then yeah. I had to go on vacation, and then Starfield. But I, since fuck Starfield, I'm like, well, let me go back I, to it. You I know? don't. I don't know if this is my game of the year. I think it is because it it's not. I didn't play enough or at all Breath of the Wild 2. But this game just has so many options. There's obviously some bugs, which is problematic. My hag fight bu bugged out. Uh, she didn't do anything. So I just stood there. And oh, her. she was a fun so fight. Just, she bugged for me. She just stood there and like, I hate you and just like pointed at me. She hers was oh, great yeah. because she like she like clones into a bunch of yes, different versions that's of herself. What I heard. And I had. Yeah. And you could like sort of figure it out, like because the like I don't know if it's a bug or you're supposed to, but like the text bubble would come from the correct one. So you would just oh. then throw a grenade or something. I, oh, I had I had magic fun. missile ready for that. So getting down prepared. there sucked ass though. Oh, that was terrible. That that felt really clunky too. Uh, I think I killed. Oh, oh, I think sorry. I reloaded which, which it up four or five times. The hag, the hag, the which hag, fight? the old lady in the swamp. Getting in getting down one. to the the, the hag. Oh, see, see, that's was... Because I didn't fight her. I, oh. I, I, you she wanted to take thing. an eye. You gave the <laughs> and eye? And I was like, and I hate Shadowheart. And I was like, Shadowheart really wants this. So, so she, so she, took Wait, Shadowheart Shadowheart eye. No eye? <laughs> yeah, she disappeared. So I, think the only, I think the only thing is she has like a disadvantage on like perception checks. Yeah, I think my, that's it. my wizard checks, yeah. knew what it was. So he kept saying it. And oh. I'd be like, oh, I don't want to do this then. Okay. Oh, okay. That's but good. getting down there was not fun. The the vent, yeah, the poison nightmare. vents was clunky. It felt the mask thing was really. I get what they were trying to do. Felt a little clunky. Uh, the zombie also, guy afterwards was great. Yeah, that's good. The the there's a huge bug in the game, in my opinion, that they still need to figure out. Um, unarmed or because they make it a big deal that you can knock people out. Uh, mm -hmm. It doesn't really work because when you knock somebody out, they're like almost like kind of treated as dead. They're not, but like they are. So I tried to knock out one of those mask people and then I like long rested and they like disappeared because they weren't waking up. 
I didn't want to just sit there. I didn't know how long they were going to be knocked out for. It's a little clunky. They, they're almost like treated as dead. It's really hard to do like, yeah, let them live combat, which is if you want to be like a paladin or a nice guy, it can be a little tricky. Generally speaking, I just kill everybody anyway. But, you know, for that encounter, I didn't think it worked the way it was supposed to because Mask of Regret, I've heard, is supposed to regret and like you're able to save them. But uh, oh, well, but it's still really fun. And like I said, it might be my game of the year. Combat's probably its weakest part. And that's a good problem to have. Uh, but there's still some fun yeah. things you can do in combat. I'm still learning. It's probably me not knowing the systems well enough. So, yeah. And, and I would say, honestly, half of the problem with the combat in Baldur's Gate 3 it's not Baldur's Gate 3, it's 5th edition. Yeah, you know, honestly, it, it might be too, yeah. Yeah. Like, if you roll really well, your entire combat, which is a 5th edi- edition, but, like, there's encounters where I, like, you know, murder a guy before he gets even, like, a, the entire, like, room, or vice versa, yeah. I get, I have to reload a save because we all, like, did fucking dog shit on initiative, and, like, three of my guys went down. I'm like, that sucks. Uh, yeah. So, it happens. Or some like, of the... You know, this this happens in tabletop as well. Some of the enemies where it's like, oh, hey, this enemy is like a level three little dude. But for some reason, he has four actions per turn. And so he's just like fucking doing all this shit around you. And you're like, what the fuck is going on here? There there was an encounter in a mountain pass. I had to reload three or four times because the ghouls kept uh, hitting. They kept hitting their fucking uh, paralyze on me. And I'm like, this is like they kept hitting. I kept failing every paralyze save. I'm like, I'm fucking dead. (sighs) That That was. was, Yeah. Yeah. Fighting those necromancer guys was the best thing ever. I used um, Cloud of Daggers, and they kept yep. resur- They kept summoning ghouls, whatever, in the Cloud of Daggers. So they would every <laughs> turn they would summon a guy. He would die. I would get XP. Summon a guy, die XP. Oh my summon god! I'm like, I was like, wow. part of me is like, I should just milk this forever. But I like at some point I was like I just should fight. But every and and it was like there was like a a cart or something. So it was literally the only path was the cloud of daggers. And since then, uh, I have used the cloud of daggers trick. Like I'll always block off a way to my people with a cloud of daggers. Yeah, because and, and they'll just run through it and annihilate stuff. them. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's fantastic. But it's super good. Uh, so that's one of my games. It's it's yeah. definitely a great game. Yeah. How's Shadow Tactics Pirates? I'm real, uh, so I'm, I'm really bummed about... Uh, first of all, the game's great. I mean, if you like the other Min and Me games, they're, it's the same thing, except more super... They, they've progressively gotten more superpower-ish. In Desperados, they had a character that had voodoo magic who did some, like, fucking wild shit that wasn't just, like, throwing shurikens. So they went ninja to cowboys, and then one of the cowboy characters was, like I said, this voodoo witch doctor character. Uh, and then shadow tactics pirates is all they all have like special sh- like undead pirate kind of theme stuff what is One the actual name of the game shadow tactics uh i think it's shadow i forget what it is shadow tactics i i don't know if you look up the pirate if you look up shadow tactics pirate or something like that you probably find it i actually don't know the name of it uh <laughs> which i could probably pull it up uh pull but up. there's a guy who can like take his like head off and it's a golden skull and he uses that as a lure instead and he has like a fishing rod he can pull people into like his like pirate chest on his back shadow like gambit that. shadow gambit yeah the cursed crew yeah uh it's super fun uh i almost nearly beat it by now the full main story um you can pick and choose which guy you want to go on the missions now there it's more island based like i want to go to this island instead of mission based let's go to this island do like the mission on the island but for the most part um, like you pick like your team of three to go there. So you'll, and you can upgrade them too. They have like an RPG like upgrading like this move now instead of being able to only possess basic level grunts. Now you can possess the leaders too. Like that's kind of cool. You can like upgrade their talents. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you like their other like stealth tactics games, they're the best around at making them. They're beautifully made in terms of like knowing when you're going to get punished for getting seen or like you're rewarded for like they have great vision cones like the noise like they'll have like noise reticules if you're going to make too much noise uh you can <clears throat> shift pause to have like three actions at once so your three pirates can do like this guy throws a coin distracts a guy you come up and stab him and then the other guy throws with Kirk and another guy in a tower that's looking over him so you can kill like you can do like three different things to make nice. sure your tactical play works um 
I'm really bummed because the company just announced that they're done, like they're going under, or like they're done. So that's the last mm, yeah. Shadow Tactics games. And I think they had a grip hold off the market. They made the best stealth games out there, I think. Uh, now I'm kind of bummed that they're going to be going by. So check it out. Um, they're fun games. If you can get Shadow Tactics, it often goes on shit sale. Any one of them, if it goes on sale, I'd pick it up. They're worth some. I some just look bought at. it. Or not just oh, bought really? it, but I bought it when it went on sale. Yeah. Um, they go on sale a lot, is what I would say. Uh, and like I said, they're great games. And you can dive. Like, you don't have to spend too long on missions. You can jump in and out, save, or whatever. You can save. They encourage saving, quick saving, all that jazz for your, your tactical play. But they have different ways to like, lure people. You can like lure people with like an object or like a flute or something like that. And they'll go check it out. All kinds of stuff. There's blinks, dashes, thrown weapons, guns. There's a sniper that shoots people from far away. There's everything you can think of in a tactic game to help you stealth around. There's something that helps you do it. And this one even has Ooh. more superpowers. So, um, like I said, one person has like a stop time ability where you can like run when they're stopping time through like cones and stuff. One person mm -hmm. can create bushes where you can hide bodies because she's like a plant. Like Ooh. Doctor George, it's good stuff. Not George, uh, not George Bushes, not George Bushes. No, wow. Uh, I regret being on the show. Uh, one, <laughs> but they're Sorry. they're good games. If you've never played one, it's it's hard to explain and sum it up very well. But hopefully, I did in a decent manner. But there's just stealth tactics games. Like you, you can pick a character and do an action with them and all that jazz. So. I'm into it. I want to. I really want to play Shadow Tactics. After I think it was the last uh, local chat you you were on, you uh, stayed after class, uh, and we chatted for for a while. Sorry, yeah. I was trying to think of the best way to put that. Uh, and you were telling me about Shadow Tactics, so they're good. Um, and this one's just the same. It's just as good as the last ones. I'm like I said, the most the, the thing I'm most bummed about is like I said, the company is basically thrown in their hat. They're done. So this is this is the last one. That sucks. This is their last hurrah. Do you think they'll like reform into another company? I don't know. I, I really don't think so. Because were they, they are... let go by the like parent? They're company, their own company. Or... They're mini me. They're, 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 yeah. oh, they're their own company. They just called it quits. That stinks. Yeah. Oh well. I think they're um, Yeah. Yeah. I hope they. I hope they can work on. I hope someone takes we'll up see. the mantle then for for you. It's like Telltale Games. Maybe they'll make. They'll come back. Yeah. They'll make Telltale Shadow Tactics. There you go. Um, I'll go through my stuff quick since it's a little, a little over an hour now. Uh, I started playing Armored Core Six, and then I stopped playing Armored Core Six. Um, uh, I I played oh, gotcha. a good decent amount, like six hours, and then uh, I was doing the last mission of Chapter One, and I uh, I fought what I thought was the boss. Took it like three or four tries. Finally got him. I was super excited. And then uh, goes to a cutscene, and then the actual boss you have to fight after that. And uh, I tried about ten times, maybe. Is this this elephant um, boss that I keep hearing about? No, he's not an elephant. No, I he's think just it's... got a bunch of missiles and this weird shield. Okay. And I know it's how to like beat him. Hoop. <laughs> but um, it's on quick resume right now. So if I quit, I have to fight the boss who is super annoying and then fight him. But if I leave it in quick Ugh. resume, I just have to fight the annoying guy over and over again. So as far as I'm concerned, that'll be in quick resume for the next 30 years because I'll probably never be able to do it or at least until extra <laughs> life and Jake can do it for me. Um, but uh, yeah, I was just so fucking pissed. I think you can see it in, in the discord chat. I just said, fuck this game. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I, I'm not good at video games and from software difficulty has always been not just an obstacle for me, but a, a complete frustration with me. Cause I don't like games that are punishing, challenging, yeah. but I will say I forgot this game's on PC and now there are mods out to basically not quite cheat engine, but somebody has a mod that's just like easy difficulty and it's like three times health, three times ammo and all this stuff. And I'm like, Great. Now I can play this game knowing that I have these mods to back me up to allow me to get through this stuff without, you know, completely giving up in, in act one like you are. Not that you're giving up, but at least on no. PC, I'll have an option to, to power me through and that. I think the most annoying part is the game was trivial up until those two guys. Like I was having yeah. no problem um, at all. That's, that's what they do. Anything. 
Um, where I feel like even Dark Souls and Elden Ring at least work you up to it a little bit. But it was just yeah. like, there was no, none of that. And, uh, and I will say the game feels great. It plays great. It's super fun. I spent like an hour and a half making a fucking awesome emblem that I'll never be able to <laughs> use again. Are those, um, are those emblems like shared? Like, can you post that to the cloud or can you save it as a I, QR code for somebody? I couldn't figure that out because I was going to I was trying to go to like a there's like a bunch of user folders, but I couldn't figure out how to go uh -huh. and like see more. So I wonder you like you're I'm like still at the stage of unlocking things in the like main menu area, um, the hub menu, I guess I would call it. Um, so it could be something that gets unlocked is like transferring that stuff. But as of right now, okay. I, I don't think there is. Because I really wanted Jake's... Uh, Jake making a great subpixel one um, that I wanted to, to use. But um, it, the system for yeah. it's pretty good, at least with the controller. It is very... It's Photoshop, essentially. Like, you have all the layers. You can put masks on things. Uh, you can... Like, all that sort of stuff. So, it's pretty interesting. Um, other than Armored Core, I beat... Uh, purchased and beat the new Golden Idol DLC this week. Hey. Um, that was super fun. I'm excited for that. Great fucking yeah. DLC. How long was it? By the uh, way? maybe two hours. Like two hours? So yeah. The other DLC long. wasn't that long either, but it's, and it's another three cases, right? I don't. Yeah, it's another three cases. Um, I be, it'll be the last DLC because um, it's got a neat little little connection point at the end there. Okay. Um, is it? I is assume it connects exciting. with the previous one, right? Cases uh, yeah, stuff, it's maybe? after the after the previous one. Okay, and both oh, of them the are before. DLC? It's after the yeah. previous DLC, but both of those are before the before main game. Thing. And another question too: um, Is the DLC in terms of like difficulty? The DLC there was like one hard the the one where you're at the temple. Or what, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Th that felt it, like post game. So I'm assuming yeah. the second DLC is also like post main game in terms of difficulty. Okay. Yeah, I I would say. <clears throat> I want to say the now I can't remember if the second or third one was the hardest. There was um, it's also the one where you're at the ceremony and you're trying to figure out what. No, happened sorry, I'm DLC. talking about the new DLC. If oh, the second sorry, or third okay. was hardest. So uh, they also lay out a, a bunch of cool stuff. Um, th they make use of new screens. Uh, so it's like go over to the thinking screen oh and then click on another screen to bring oh, up another screen. <laughs> it's whoa, like, wow. and, but I will say they added something great for. Uh, uh, chapter two and three of the DLC, which is stuff you know, so okay. you don't have to redo Ooh. the characters every single time. It you just click a menu and it shows me what I know. Okay. So you can just click yeah. and drag their names up. Names, faces, um, yeah. There were a couple things where it's like, um, I was like, I'm quite not quite sure how I'm supposed to know that. Um, like, v like once you figure it out, you're like, I guess I would, I would have gotten that. Like if you really think yeah. about sometimes, it, but sometimes I logically get to some. Yeah, and, and I bad. think that's how they expect you to do it a lot okay. of the times. Uh, uh, and it's not like a leaps and bounds, like out of yeah. nowhere. Um, but I really enjoyed it. I, I think, um, at least this is the first time it felt like I was a hundred percent positive someone did it and like knew exactly who it was. And then I noticed <laughs> one thing and changed like the person's name throughout it, and it was it like solved it, and I was like oh that like, like yeah. that's why that is like that like then all the stuff clicked into place so okay. really enjoyable dlc the other thing they add uh for them is times of day within the mission Ooh. so it's the same location Ooh. but you go to different times of the day and then Ooh. some of the things will be like in the morning this happened that's in wild. the afternoon okay. this happened and then right oh. before this happened like um uh and and again it's more lore of the golden idol which is really neat um I like that they they kind of went with that. Yeah, just let's fucking say it. <laughs> Banger 2022 game. game of the year. The <laughs> more time goes on, the more I realize I, we should have fought harder for that to go up the list. It ended up what six or seven on our list, something like that. What was game of the year last year? It was Pentiment. Oh, Pentiment. Yeah, came I down mean, to Pentiment. Elden Ring or Pentiment. I was gonna say, uh, but uh, genuinely. Golden Idol. The Golden Idol is better than all I of just, Yeah, it's Golden Idol. I just incredible. don't know how Jake and like I don't disagree yeah. with them, but I just I I know they don't like it because I feel like it didn't click for them. 
Like, it's one of those games where I'm like, I just want to shake the person and be like, no, this game's good. You're stupid. You but, have to power through but it. But also, yeah. I, I'm not mad at them for not liking it because they don't like... You're allowed to not like certain games. Well, but that's <laughs> so the thing is that like... I know this is... I know this is a Jake game. That's the frustrating part. So so we have the agreement with him where it's what? In, he's going to wait two years and then he's going to try it all over again because he oh, did four or yeah. five cases in the first one and he didn't like it. So we're going to wait two years wow, and he's going to try it all over again. And I'm excited for him to finally realize how amazing that game is. So good. Yeah, it's it's so good. It's The DLC is great. And I hope... I hope... I don't know if they announced this is the last DLC, but I'm just assuming it is. Um, I hope they're already cranking on a new game because, oh, yeah. it's so good. I could, I could, I hope the next thing is like even bigger. Like I would, yeah, it's good. So good. Uh, and then finally I started Fire Emblem Radiant Dawn. Ooh. Radiant Dawn um, is the sequel to Path of Radiance. Um, that's the one, that's the game I really need to be. Besides just Baldur's Gate, which I'm still potentially down for, but Radiant Dawn, I would love to be out there for at least one of your your time. You're like, hey, I'm playing this game for this many hours today. Come along, oh, yeah, okay. I'll join you. Do I'll do that with you one day if you really want to? Because I think I, I that would, would really yeah. help. I would do that whenever. I'd stream some shoot, of that. Shoot, shoot, shoot me a message then, honestly. Yeah. A, um. Okay. Yeah, I gotta figure out what I'm. Uh, I was gonna stream something tomorrow night. I don't. Not necessarily if you're free tomorrow night, but. Um, yeah. I'm free tomorrow night, so I was going to stream something. I am streaming Fire Emblem tomorrow on Save Data wow. for the first time ever. What the fuck? Wow. Well, I'm going to stream I've Fire Emblem them. on Save Data. I've, I've com compete well. against us. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, Radiant, Radiant Dawn, I, I would love to see it, if, even if it's a little bit, how you're, how you're enjoying it. I mean, yeah. hopefully. Uh, um, yeah, Path of Radiance, I really liked. I don't, I didn't really talk about it on, on local chat. Uh, I extremely enjoyed it. I still think Sacred Stones is the better game um because i really like sacred stones um so far i feel like radiant dawn it's 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 been a little lazy in the story department i feel it's like it gets too big for me i think is what happens really because it, it feels like they're rushing stuff right now well you haven't gotten it you'll see i'll okay. just say it like okay. that it, it gets pretty big it's it gets so scopic like and the character I, individuals get bored out a little bit, I think, is what happens. Yeah, because I feel like in, in Path of Radiance, it was about 25 to 45 minutes between missions, and that's including, like, managing and, and outfitting and talking to mm -hmm. people, where this one, it was just, like, like five minutes. Uh, the, uh, the, so, famously, the Dawn Brigade that you're playing right now, they get, like, no characterization. That's a big complaint of the game. Oh. Um, because... They, people wish that they got but for the most part they only have like their generic lines in between the bases and that's about it like gotcha sucks. yeah that, when, that, that that makes a lot more it, sense now in, in comparison it. to path of ratings like this this fucking mercenary that you're with like boyd starts trash talking in between missions and this guy's a character throughout the entire like you know what i'm saying like you grow to oh. like grow with boyd or something favorite like part favorite part of um path of radiance is 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 his name don't Lado? say Makalove. Largo? Uh, Largo? Largo? The guy wearing a bear log? Yeah. Fucking, fucking Largo <laughs> and Miriam? Miriam? Uh, the, 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 uh, the tiger will, guy. The, the will they won't bandana. day? I just was yeah. waiting for them to... I, like, that is the closest I've <sighs> been to Googling Rule 34 of Fire Emblem. Jesus. Because I was like, these two gentlemen need to fuck right now. Because yeah. every time... They have their little scenes. It's like, oh, I can pick up a log. Oh, I'd love to see you pick up a log someday. It's like, I'd love to see you shove a log inside God. of him. Like, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm, so you like the story in Path of Radiance, though, for the most part? That's my favorite I part. I really liked game, it. Right? Um, it okay. kind of felt the ending fell flat for me, where okay. the ending of... Uh, Sacred, Sacred Stones, Stones like I think did a really good job being like we saved the world and then like oh fuck not quite and then you like do a little bit more where I was expecting that in Path of Radiance where it kind of just you beat them and then it ended and we're like we saved the world and it was like no but but we did the thing the thing wanted us to do why didn't it make well, it evil because there's a sequel will that's know, why they have to... fuck you I'm it doesn't just need fuck, to be I'm a just, sequel I'm, 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 I'm I know, I know you are um but i'm i'm unfortunately turning into jason where i like fire emblem games uh and i put more tough, fire emblem games life. on my 3ds um just so i can look at them you know i'm not yeah, playing them tough life i started uh, fire emblem awakening don't and, do that 
It's and a whole other rabbit hole. I know. And I I hate the Fire Emblem Awakening character creator. I look the characters look chibi and I uh they're the so here's the thing. That that game, they're the worst character designs in the entire series that I've played. Yeah. Okay, character good. designs, like that that how they look. So <laughs> you're yeah. that if that's the lowest it goes for you, we're good. Okay, good. Uh, good. At, I was like, just every, like mm-mm. They don't have feet. They don't. They don't wear shoes, dude. They don't have feet, and they don't wear shoes. I was their um, feet are snubs. <laughs> I was also thinking of playing. I bought that Loke translated Fire Emblem, the first one, on the uh, Switch. Oh, I thought okay. about checking that out. Um, uh, I I don't play the. I, I haven't played one through three because they're too archaic for me. Oh, we should say. play one through three. I I really I was oh, I was looking at, and then I was looking at the canceled N sixty four one, and I was like, this one. I, yeah, I, I like that one. It looks so cool. Yeah, but um, I, I'm hopefully Radiant Dawn treats you well. It's a, it's probably the longest game in the series, though, unfortunately. Really? So. Well, I'm fine with that. I, it, Fire Emblem has become my like TV game, where I just like you're on, you're on Act One. There's four acts. Jesus Christ. Well, it's okay. Path of Radiance, I took a break during and came back to. Yeah. Uh, it's basically whenever I want like a, a puzzle game because they're just puzzle games to me. Okay. Um, man, fuck that milkmaid. Who's your favorite quest. of the Dawn Brigade, real quick? Favorite of the Dawn Brigade is not the the fucking bitch. What about, uh, what about Nolan? I, Nolan. I don't. Okay, so I have so Soth 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 Soth's Soth in Path of Radiance. So okay, oh, that's what I thought. So he's, old, I've got, he's, he's grown up. Yeah, he's great. Yeah. Um, I've got um, m- 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 uh, Miriam, Mir, 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 Miracle, Miria. Oh, Micaiah. Mi- Micaiah. Thank you. I hate her. Micaiah. She's the worst. She's awful. Um, the other bow guy, Leonardo. Leonardo. The sword kid sucks ass. Edward. <laughs> I hate him. He, and yeah, the milkmaid, she's great because she heals everyone. Oh, Laura, yeah, she's a she's a maid. And then there's Nolan, the fucking Chad with an axe, who's going like, mm. yeah, he's pretty great. I like Nolan. Um, I don't like how they like made Benyon and and the bad guys. <laughs> like they were just like, oh, Crimea oh. decided not to take over Dane, so they just had the Nazis take over. <laughs> Yeah. If, like, you, if you don't like if you don't like Benyon being the the bad guys in that game, you are playing the wrong game. No, I just bad... like they weren't that bad in the previous game. No, like, they were sort of bad, and now they're just like, oh yeah, those guys. They, they were a full on. They bad, were yeah. yeah, yeah. They were killing people in the street. Yeah, you know, they murder a child and then they yep. murder three adults. And it's just like yep. what the they were fuck asking is for going it. on. They were. I mean, the guy walked up to him. And they were like, literally I love, asking for it. I love Jared, though. He just stabs people. He's like, I'm just going to fucking kill you, dude. Yeah. Like, get the fuck out of my way. They're, like, they're, they're passionate about their Nazism, but they're yeah. <laughs> they still Don't murdered worry. Everyone. There's a bunch of bad guys in that game who are just like very cheesy bad guys. He's like, I like money. I'm fucking evil. Yeah. I'm a senator. I feel like, oh, God, the fucking <laughs> pedophile senator from Path of Radiance. That guy was creepy. All, Oliver? That was one of the creepiest <laughs> missions ever. Like it, I forgot about that. That was so good. The Oliver, like, yeah, yeah. Like I need him. Like oh my beauty. Oh, it was so. That guy was creepy as fuck. Yeah. Um. Anyways, uh, enough about. If you uh, find time to stream it, let me know. I will be happy to, if it, as long as it's like sometime during the week or something like that. Pretty decent chance. Yeah. yeah Any day yeah. but Monday. So. Any day but Monday. Monday it is yeah. then. Um. <laughs> yeah, no, I 100 percent be down with that. Uh, that is gonna be it for the for the games we've been playing section. Uh, do we want to hit the news quick? Is there anything you want to talk about, Ian? No, no. God no. God no. no. Um, I will just say I'll hit the wish list spotlight, or else Jake will have my neck. It's time for the wish list spotlight uh, this week. Our game we have chosen, uh, down from the depths of hell itself, uh, Breachway which is a turn-based game here. Assemble your crew, load out your ship, and explore the galaxy in this deck-building space roguelike. This caught my attention because there were a couple screenshots and videos uh, of two ships fighting, almost uh, not FTL style, but like sort of FTL style, uh, where that has that split menu, and you're just playing cards instead of like using like ship guns and everything. And I think that's really neat of like ships fighting each other uh, it's very Galactic Empires of them to really, like, 
use cards in a science fiction environment, and I just think that's really neat. Um, your deck is determined by your spaceship's loadup, mix and match, uh, almost like building your decks for your ship. Uh, it looks really cool. Breachway, go wishlist it on Steam. Release date is 2023. Uh, go check it out. That is Breachway. Uh, and cool. folks, that is going to be it for this local chat episode. Uh, I hesitate to hit the outro button because I'm never quite fast enough. Uh, Jason, I'll get your outro before I hit it so I don't slow you down. Where can people find you? Uh, most of my stuff is now... I, I mean, I've been streaming on Green 8Ball at Twitch.com, but I also go on Save Data Team uh, at Twitch.com or on YouTube, and I'm writing a song for Save Data Team, so hopefully that comes out. Wow. Wow. So my own parody song, the second one we've written. First one. Nice. Okay. So the second one, hopefully, is just as good. God, we should write. And we're music. gonna have a massive stream. We're gonna have a massive stream next Saturday. So, I can feel like you get to do a lot of cool stuff because you have people who watch your content. No, I just, I just <laughs> do it. People didn't even watch my first song, but I'm still fucking making the second one. So, oh. I'm just doing it. Well, we love you. So yeah. that's enough for me. Um, cool. folks, uh, you can find all our content at subpixelfilms.com. We'll bring you straight to our link tree, where you can see our Twitch, our merch, our YouTube, whatever you want. Tomorrow at noon Eastern. My brand new video about Galactic Empires is coming out, folks. Almost a year in the making. Uh, it will be out. It is over 30 minutes long. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, it took a really long time to put together, and I, uh, I'm stressed out of my mind. Uh, I will be exporting another version of that tonight because I noticed one mistake in the previous export. <laughs> so that'll be exported later. So yeah, tomorrow at noon uh, Eastern. Go check that out. Uh, Ian, thank you so much for being here uh, at Think Gibson cool. on Twitter. I'm at Hunt270 on Twitter. Uh, we'll be back this weekend with some fanfic from Ian on Sunday. And possibly I'll be streaming tomorrow. I'm not quite sure yet. But we'll see you all next week. Thanks for having me.